juice box. Junkie juice box. Uh. Mother lover, you gon' love this. Graduated from a rebel to a revolutionary in my area, they love this. I'ma wreck it like I'm revving the engine. Heaven's ascension, every dimension. Give me attention. Look at my soul, look at my heart, look at my heart. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to episode 7 of the Hogline Podcast. Today, I am joined by a returning guest, a three-time, the third time on your show, right? Yeah. You know who that is? That is Jack Manis. Say Hello. what's up to the people. Hello, everyone. He's back. Yeah. All right. Uh, today, we, are, we have a variety of topics to get into. We have some news that broke since our last episode. We have a bunch of the Rockets have been active in the NBA offseason. We're going to be uh, discussing them in, in our new segment here. Jack's got a word to say on Carmelo Anthony. A word or two. A word or two. Uh, we're going to give our top five candidates for the MB, MB, NBA MVP for the next season. And we're going to give some NFL preseason storylines. And we're also going to do a live mock draft at the end of the show. Live so, mock, baby. Live mock, live and in studio. We are gonna studio. get we are gonna get right into it. Uh, I'm gonna run down some of the news since last episode. Give him the rundown. Give, give him the lowdown. I will give him the run, the rundown. The lowdown. The lowdown and the rundown. Uh, Todd Gurley signed with the Los Angeles Rams, uh, four years, sixty million dollars, forty five of it guaranteed, and this keeps him in Los Angeles for six more years. I think uh, it was an extension oh, of his. I didn't know that. It was an extension of his contract, I believe. Oh. Uh, this makes him the highest paid running back in the NFL. Obviously, we talked a lot about NFL running back contracts in the previous two episodes with Le'Veon Bell and Saquon Barkley. Uh, but this has, you know, reset the market for running back contracts. Yeah. Uh, also, the Rockets have agreed to buy out Carmel Anthony's contract from the Oklahoma City Thunder. Um. You know, I don't know why they would want to do that. It seems kind of like a suicide <laughs> mission to me, but yeah, I guess good for them. Not good for Not them. Not good for them. You'll find out in a second when Jack gives his comment on that. Uh, Clint Capella re uh, signed with the Houston Rockets. Five years, $90 million. Uh, so the Rockets, I have no idea how they have all this money to have James Harden under that huge contract and Chris Paul. Now Carmelo. And Carmelo and Clint Capella. I, I don't get where NBA teams get their money from. Well, Reese is gone, right? I mean, he probably wasn't Yeah, but still, they anyway, have but yeah. four people making over 20, I can't do this math, like $22 million a year. They have four people making over $22 million a year. So I, I don't know where they get that money. I don't know anything about the NBA cap, but they must be way over it. Um, well, that's what the Thunder were. They were going to be expected to be way over the cap, but the Rockets have to be. But now way, since way they over dump the Mellow, that's why they're not on it anymore. But yeah, so um, I mean, they're, they're it'll be worth it. They have a good team, but it's a lot of money. Uh, that that's a good transition into Carmelo Anthony. We're going to talk about him. Obviously, Jack is very passionate about Carmelo. Uh, passionate in a pa- bad way. Passionate in a bad way. Yes. <laughs> After this year. Um, well, I'm rooting for, I always root for Westbrook and honestly, Carmelo is just completely toxic for the Thunder as any NBA, NBA fan really saw. Um, he shot well below his, his career average for a uh, field goal percentage points per game went way down. All his stat lines pretty much just went way down and he truly is. He really, he is on, he doesn't have any more. He's on the decline of his career. What was he? 33? Uh, thirty-four. I don't know. Thirty-four. Okay. He came out of the same draft class as LeBron, but he went to a year at Syracuse, so that probably makes him thirty-four. Yeah, he's not getting so, any younger, and yeah. not getting any better. Certainly not. So, yeah, he, it's the aging superstar is is like the worst thing a team can have. Like a guy that thinks he still has it, he really doesn't, and. Honestly, I think that he's what was holding the Thunder back this year, um, this past year, and I think he's gonna he's gonna hurt the Rockets a little bit. And I saw the statistic, uh, Bleacher Report when I posted. I don't know, but a percent chance of 
Like it wasn't like a, a meme account. It was like a legit thing. Is percent chance of the Rockets of going winning the finals without Carmelo four point nine percent with Carmelo three point eight percent, and I truly believe that he's gonna hurt their chances of winning because he just demands what he can't handle, and it's 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 terrible. It's so it's so frustrating. Yeah, I guess so. I I think I guess to play devil's advocate to your point, if it's a, it might be a big if, but if he realizes his role, he can be good in a role player situation. Yeah, but his if ego he, if, is just, his ego is just too big, and I I don't see it happening. I I, I know I I don't necessarily agree or disagree with you there, but if he does recognize his role, he can be he can provide scoring off the bench in a limited yeah. capacity of minutes. So sure, I, it yeah. all depends on that, which you know we'll find out in due time. Uh, yeah. Jack could go on for a long time about Carmelo, but we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna stop him here. Some other things to get to. Uh, yeah. So we are going to give you our top five NBA MVP candidates for next season. It's a little early, but you know, a uh, little slow time in sports, so we figured why not. I just saw first take did it, so I could play rip them off and took their idea. Yeah. <laughs> why not? You know, sharing is we're we're all about sharing ideas in the podcast industry, right? <laughs> yeah, us and first take and Stephen A. Smith. Everyone, we're all brothers here. <laughs> uh, Jack, who is your number five guy? We have not shared. We have not. No. So it could be the identical list. It could be completely different. Who knows? Uh, who's your number five, Jack? I picked Kevin Durant, and I it's it's tough because they just signed Cousins, and there's just so much to go around, uh, in regards to production. So they're People are thinking that their stats are going to take a hit, which very likely it will. But I think Durant is just coming into his own, into his career. And I, I feel like he'll, I mean, even like the fifth candidate for MVP doesn't get mentioned. They really only, it's at the end of the year, it's just a top three. But yeah, he, I think he could be in discussion. Just, I think he's going to, he's going to, he's really chasing after LeBron's legacy, in my opinion. Like I don't think he's gonna get it. I'm a huge LeBron fan. I don't even like Durant. I just think that whether he says it or not, like in the back of his head, he wants to chase LeBron, LeBron's legacy. So he's gonna. I think his game might even be elevated a little more this year. That being said, the ball's got to be spread around, as many people are saying in Golden State. So it's yeah, not like there's only so, one yeah. basketball. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Yeah, I. I I don't think a player from the Warriors will ever win MVP as as long as this core uh, four or five guys are intact. And I, I not just the Warriors, but I think teams like Boston and Golden State and even San Antonio, just the, the way that they play in the system, that all the numbers and the shots, they get distributed, even not evenly exactly, but you know they like to distribute the ball to different guys. So that one guy is not going to put up enough stats to get MVP attention. And so that's why I don't have any Warriors on my list or I don't, I don't have Kyrie on my list or anything. But anyway, my number five guy is Anthony Davis of the New Orleans Pelicans. Uh, obviously, he came in third place last year, I believe, in the MVP voting. Uh, I, I don't even think – this might be a little – this is a bold take. I don't think you the know, Pelicans are going to miss in the playoffs. Right? I don't think the Pelicans yeah. are making the playoffs next year. Which – how how would he be a candidate if they don't make the playoffs? I I, I mean I, that I don't know exactly. That doesn't really make any sense. But if they do, he has to be the guy. He uh you know he he has to be without Cousins now. He is the guy. He's gonna. It's true. If they make the playoffs, he has to put up twenty five and twelve and more two blocks. Yeah, more points. Uh, he's gonna. He averaged twenty eight last year. I think he's gonna. He that's his he's gonna get hit there or probably more this whole year yeah so. so when you're picking mvp candidates you have to pick guys that that's don't have other su- don't have other yeah superstars on their team so yeah anthony davis is my yeah. number five who's number four uh surprising one and who made recent news demar Derozan. um i think that he's definitely gonna he, no doubt he's gonna be playing on chip on his shoulder this year um very mad raptors uh, trade him to the Spurs, but I think Popovich is he's the best coach I've ever seen, and I I think that he there's a chance that he could uh, bring DeRozan's game to what Kyle Kawhi was two years ago. Kawhi was the third in MVP uh, voting, whatever in 2017, 
and I think there's a chance that De- DeRozan could get there himself, and that would kind of prove that, not prove, but be an argument in favor of Kawhi being just a part of Popovich's system, and we would see how he is in Toronto, but I think if there's any coach that can do it, I think Popovich could bring an MVP candidate out of DeRozan, and I'm excited to see that duo. Yeah, uh, obviously Pop gets the most out of his players. Yeah. He, and that'll uh, – DeRozan going to the Spurs will help him in the long run. Like, I think as he ages – For sure. Yeah, because, like, usually if older older the players get, they the worse they get. But, you know, Pop seems to defeat Father Time. And <laughs> he uh, can get the most out of his players despite their aging. Yeah. Uh, my number four guy is Giannis of the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, again, a similar situation to Anthony Davis where, yeah, the Bucks have some nice pieces on the team as the Pelicans do, but if the Bucks, the Bucks will go as far as Giannis takes them, quite frankly. Uh, you know, he's just getting better with age. I don't know how old he is, like 23, 24. Four. Yeah, so he, he's still going into his prime. He still has a few years till he hits his prime, which is pretty scary to think about as he's already putting up monster numbers, but... You know the we- the Eastern Conference got weaker, so the Bucks will only be better than they were last year in the standings, and probably win more games. So that'll help his MVP status, and his numbers will improve. And yeah, th- yeah, that's it's pretty simple. Why he c- you don't have to make too many arguments. Why it's pretty obvious why he's an MVP candidate for years to come. Yeah, um, my three was also Giannis. I'm not going to really repeat what you said. Just I have I had the Bucks being the three seed as of now, and. I, I think it's just because of him, so that's pretty much just why. Yeah, that's I, I fair. You said too. Yeah. That's fair. So here's your three. Uh, my three is Russell Westbrook. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I I think he got shortchanged in MVP conversations last year. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. How can you? <laughs> you average right, triple double. Right, right. yeah. I know he's on your list. So save it for when he's on okay. your list. <laughs> uh, yeah, Russell Westbrook. Uh, you know. Obviously, fantastic talent in the NBA. Um, oh yeah, yeah. So he, <coughs> excuse me, he got shortchanged last year, as I said. Um, he, he wasn't even mentioned. He wasn't even. Like, no <laughs> one, no one talked about him as MVP last year, and I, I don't think he should have won. Because I think it was James Harden. Oh, I know. I thought it was LeBron James to win it, but certainly those two. You, you can't say that. Harden and James did not deserve it last year, but just the fact that he wasn't mentioned at all is kind of disrespectful, I think, because he had a similar season. Like you, <laughs> it, it's done twice other than himself. Himself and Oscar Robertson are the only two other players in NBA history to average a triple double across an he entire season. He did it season. twice, and Russell did and it he twice it again. back to back years. And he doesn't even get mentioned. So, uh, Russ always has a chip on his shoulder no matter what the circumstances oh, are. Yeah. And, uh, you don't need to motivate him. He's self-motivated, and he will bring it every single night of the season. So, yeah, yeah, Russ is my number two. Obviously, same things you said. I think NBA, like Adam Silver should put it down as a rule right now. If you average a triple over the whole year, you should at least be in conversation for the MVP. It should be a definite rule in the NBA. I don't care. But I just think that this year, him and Paul George are going to gel even more together. and. Yeah, Carmelo's gone, so I think that's just gonna allow everyone else to shine. They're getting uh, Robertson back, Andre Robertson back, so it's just gonna help Russ even more on the, so on the defensive end, really. So yeah, I think the stars are aligning for him again this year, and for the Thunder, I think this is my two seed. But uh, I, yeah, I, I, I don't, I wouldn't be surprised, wouldn't put it past him if he had another triple double season this year. And in that case, he definitely should be and. Can't say anything more about him. I just love the guy. So yeah, who's your two? My number two is James Harden. Uh, it's it's almost it's almost the same scenario as last year. Same core around him, besides Carmelo, obviously. But, <laughs> uh, you know, he's in a situ- situation where he can thrive in, as he did for the past whatever four or five years he's been on the Rockets, and obviously the past two years he's taken it to a whole nother level. Scoring machine, unguardable, probably the best offensive talent in the NBA. You could guard him? (laughs) Yeah. All right. Maybe. Uh, On a good day. On a good day. He, uh, you know, he's the the MVP. 
and you can't take it away from him. And he should be up there again to repeat. I don't really see why not. Uh, um, we're on your number one, right? LeBron. Yeah, we're the same guy. LeBron, uh, obviously. I'll go first. He, uh, yeah, he's just gonna have a normal LeBron year and bring the Lakers. And my, I think the three seed could be a four, even a four there mid road. Uh, West team, I think that he's still the leading candidate just because the turnaround the Lakers of last year to what they uh, a playoff team next year, I think is just gonna, yeah, I think just gonna give it to him. Like, it's pretty obvious. An in interesting question is when will LeBron James start to decline? It happens to everyone, obviously, as they get older. I mean, James, Michael Jordan has down years eventually when he. Uh, when he got up there in age, what age do you think LeBron James starts to see his stats decrease? I'm going to go bold. I'm going to say 30. I was going to. No, 38. 38. When, when do you think he will retire then? Um, he could go in his 40s, honestly. Um, it just. The reason I'm saying just such high numbers because. He invests over a million dollars into his body every year, which I I don't know the exact stat for all the other superstars in years past, like whatever Kobe and Jordan. But I don't I have to believe it's not that number. And he just dedicates so much to his body and like taking care of himself and conditioning and whatnot and his health. I think his career is gonna show for it. It's gonna be prolonged more than these greats. And I, it's yeah. That's why. I, I was going to say a lowered age than that, but for the first time ever in your life, I think you convinced me on something. <laughs> that is a first, I, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't know. I was going to say 36, but you're right. I mean, I think Kobe would have lasted a lot longer. I mean, obviously he had a terrible injury, but yeah. if Kobe didn't you know, have that injury, he would have lasted a lot longer as well. So, yeah, I, I can see it. And he's durable, and he's never really missed significant time. Yeah. So, yeah, that that's pretty much it for our NBA uh, MVP talk for today. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, we're going to get into football, you know, my favorite Finally. sport. And I think the season is 41 days away now. Yep. Uh, that's correct. 41 days too long. Also and, correct. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, counting out of the preseason's in a week. You know, preseason doesn't satisfy our hunger fully, but... It'll tie us over. It will tie us over, I think. There's plenty of things to look forward to in the preseason. Uh, so that is the question of our first segment here. What are you looking forward to most in the preseason? Uh, Jack, give me something. What are you looking forward to the most? I'm looking forward to the Cowboys wide receiver competition. Um, of course you are. You yeah, Alan I have Alan team. Hearns on my dynasty team. Fell in the draft. I picked him up in the third round. And so the comments, they got five guys mentioned right now. It's Alan Hearns, uh, Tavon Austin, Michael Gallup, Cole Beasley, and Terrence Williams. Yeah. So Cole Beasley, I expect him to be in the slot, which I I think that's what his role will be, which it has been the past couple seasons. Um, realistically, I I was trying to read some uh some like training camp early training camp reports and I they I heard like they liked what they saw is um from Gallup as a red zone target and they really liked Austin he was taking first team reps uh I really don't buy into Tavon Austin I don't buy it yeah so I was gonna say I don't buy into him either I think he's just gonna be used as similar to what is in the Rams just like a I don't know. I think like if Tavon a, very figured it out schematic. by now. Yeah, right. Just like yeah. for situational plays and is like like a you know, like a special teams kind of guy. I just he's gonna fit into that role, I think, again in, in Dallas. So I think that leaves um so yeah, Beasley slot, Austin, special teams, whatever we just said. I really don't see Terrence Williams making much noise because I, just the same reason. The past couple years for the Cowboys, he really hasn't made much, made much noise, and I think it's gonna stay that way. I don't think his he has the chemistry with Dak that is gonna is wide receiver one caliber. So I think it's really down to, in my opinion, Hearns and Gallup. 
it's really up in the air from there. Or I, I, we're gonna have to see in preseason just which one emerges as his his guy. I mean, it, I think it really could be either one because they went uh, third round on Gallup, so they I think it's third round, right? Or do you I remember? So. I think so. So kind of early, they probably see something in him. And but then again, Hearns, he has what is probably his what year fourth year, something like know. that. Whatever he has a couple seasons under his belt. Uh, had over a thousand yards one year, I believe, seven touchdowns. Maybe I think that might be right. So he's had signs of success on uh, on offense or with a quarterback in Blake Bortles that people are skeptical of his passing ability. But um, yeah, so I really I think it's up in the air between these two guys. We'll have to see during training camp. So yeah, certainly yeah. something to look forward to. I think Zeke could also take a pretty significant uptake in the targets from years past. targets. Yeah, just just because okay. I I don't know I I think he he probably has a little bit of t- potential to do it and you know now with this gap in wide receiver talent I think Zeke could definitely see more luck in the passing game this season possibly yeah uh something that I have uh looking forward to is the rookie running backs on all the different teams in the NFL obviously we got Saquon Barkley at the top uh, um Darius Geis of the Washington Redskins. Uh, Royce Freeman, Tony Michelle, Rashad Penny, Ronald Jones, just to name a few. There's also Carry uh, on. on Johnson, Jordan Wilkins, Naheem Hines, a bunch of guys in t- uh, situations that are could be competitive for carries. And I, I think this is a big storyline because obviously rookie running backs, they're uh, the biggest fantasy asset out of all the positions. Like you don't really see rookie wide receivers making as much of an impact as they did historically in years past. So it's really the age of rookie running backs. It's a young man's game at the position. Uh, so, you know, there obviously guys like Saquon uh, have their job is pretty much safe, um, a barring injury. But I'm talking about guys like Sony Michelle, who's competing for touches in a crowded Patriots backfield. As always, Patriots backfield. Yeah, yeah. as always. And uh, maybe Royce Freeman at the moment. I think he, he will eventually uh, merge as the top back there. But, you know, we have Devontae Booker. And uh, D'Angelo Henderson now maybe competing for carries in Denver. But, you know, just to watch these guys battle it out in camp and preseason is some, something to look forward to um, for the next month. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, what else do you have, Jack? For the preseason? Yeah. Um, yeah, so another big uh, signal rookies, actually. Uh, Rosen versus Bradford in Arizona. And... I would like to meet a guy who is a Sam Bradford fan. We really um, don't know any. <laughs> I, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to meet him and have a nice sit down, take him to lunch, and just explore his mind. But uh, I, yeah, I think Bradford. Bradford is listed as the starter, the expected starter as of now. But Rosen, he's the most pro ready quarterback in the draft, and I think he's going to be the best quarterback in the draft as you do as well and many others so who there's um the browns got it wrong at number one yeah I, well we both hate ba- we both hate baker but yeah so that's another battle to look for and even if he doesn't bradford comes out victorious for week one which is people expect him to uh several weeks in the season it could take an injury which bradford has made a glass so that could happen pretty quick or just bad quarterback play which he's prone to Sam Bradford so another competition to look for out of those two in Arizona yep very intriguing there uh speaking on rookie quarterbacks I have Lamar Jackson as another point to look out for in the preseason obviously one of the most if not the most dynamic player in college football and we I know we're all looking forward to seeing him in the NFL uh, he's probably the biggest unknown right now. He's got huge be- boom or bust potential. Uh, you know, I, yeah. I saw a stat that no quarterback has ever rushed for a thousand yards in NFL history besides Michael Vick in 2006. And I wonder if that <laughs> will ever happen again. And I think Lamar Jackson could be the only guy to do it. I don't know. It's just very exciting to see. And um, I know he's playing on one of my favorite team's biggest rivals, but. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm still a Lamar Jackson fan. I always have been since he's burst onto the scene. So I'm very excited to watch him uh, just ball out in the preseason. And yeah. he'll, be, he'll be the first game. He'll be the Hall of Fame game. So hopefully we see him out there for 
at yeah. least a quarter or two. So the first game, that's uh, yeah. So Flacco probably won't even play in that game, right? Do I have you, no idea. Maybe I, a drive. I think. Okay, yeah. Oh, well, traditionally, I thought like even the starters that. Well, yeah, maybe I think like the lock starters, like like the the Rogers, the Roethlisberger's, they're not gonna be playing or Breeze, whatever. But like maybe Flacco is his jobs and que- starting jobs in question, so maybe they'll stick him out there. I don't know, but. Yeah, I'm excited to see Lamar too, and I, as I, I think that I, I'm a Lamar fan. I think he could be successful. Just as you said, he's kind of the biggest unknown right now because uh, he's such a unique player, and I, I think that his his ceiling is Cam Newton. and floor could be RG three as of right now. So like, and he, I think that's I my I think it's a fair comparison. Like he's kind of in between both of them on size, and he's pretty. He's more RG three on size. He's pretty skinny. Skinny, but he's he's got height. RG three six feet. I don't know, six three. But anyway, so yeah, he's he's a very versatile player, and I'm I'm excited to see what he he has for us in preseason, and hopefully he can break onto the scene in the NFL sooner than later. Well, for the Steelers' uh, sake, I hope later because Flacco isn't gonna get anything done. But yeah, that's all I gotta say about that. Yeah, exactly. Anything else you want to add, or you want to move on? Uh yeah, I guess we'll just get to um, what's next? <laughs> a mock draft. Oh, is that already? Mock draft Friday, baby. All right, <laughs> let's go for it. All right, so as we've done before, we've done once other on the Hogline podcast. We have a live mock draft to close out the show. Uh, last time we used Fantasy Pros, and we're gonna go with Fantasy Pros, Fantasy Pros again. Uh, very great site to do mock drafts on. Very quick. Uh, you're going against all computers. Yeah. And um. Yeah, you know, it's just real quick, and uh, it's just you know, it, it it makes sense to do on a podcast here, so I have time to explain what we're doing and the thought process behind each pick. Sure. So today we're gonna do a ten team non PPR league. We're gonna randomize the position. I think we should do a thirty two team. Oh, no, <laughs> we're yeah. we're doing thirty two team drafts, and our teams were terrible <laughs> by the end. By the end, like we didn't even, I didn't even know, I didn't even know who these players were. Yeah, and obviously we do a lot of research, and we know every player. We thought we knew every player. <laughs> yeah, we thought. But uh, we did it on a thirty-two team. I really want to try out a thirty-two team league one year, <laughs> just to see what it's like with random people. I don't know. I think it'd be fun. Yeah, I, it is pretty rough going in the draft, and uh, oh, it probably, I probably brutal. be miserable. Probably would. Uh, Make me hate fantasy football Probably. if I did a league like that. Like by round fifteen, you're literally like it's like you're pulling out teeth. Like it's just you don't. It's just like who do you want? Like, oh, uh, it's yeah. <laughs> this is terrible. But anyway, we're gonna get onto something that's much more enjoyable: a ten team league. Oh, um, nice and safe. One quarterback, two running back, two wide receiver, one tight end, one flex, a kicker, and a defense. Uh, we're gonna randomize the position here. I'm gonna go ahead and click that button. Okay, we got fourth. We got fourth. That is probably my favorite position to draft from this year. Yeah, it's a safe uh, one because you got your 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 tier one, uh, uh, you know, lock top four running backs. Exactly. So we'll get the worst of those, and then the best second round pick out of those. So, all right, I like that situation. We started the draft, and Todd Gurley, Le'Veon Bell, and Ezekiel Elliott went off the board in that order. So we have our choice of. David Johnson, Antonio Brown, Hopkins, Kamara, Odell, Saquon, and so on and so forth. I think the choice is pretty obvious, uh, and you would agree probably David Johnson, David right? David Johnson, yeah. A lot of people are, I mean, not everyone, he's ranked really high, but some people are kind of forgetting about David Johnson. What he really has is a skill set. He's a great, he's a gifted athlete all around, and obviously great runner, and a very good pass catcher, underrated pass catcher, so that's another reason to... Go ahead and jump on him. And yeah, I really don't understand why everyone is just forgetting about him. He had yeah. a better season two years ago than Gurley did this past season, statistically. Yeah, like he he had he had over two thousand yards like Gurley did, and he scored another touchdown, and he had more receptions than him. So he had a better year than Gurley did. Uh, pretty clear cut choice, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get David Johnson. Great Christian man. Yeah, godly man. <laughs> All right, so it. some picks that went after David Johnson. Uh, were Alvin Kamara, Saquon Barkley, Antonio Brown, DeAndre Hopkins, Kareem Hunt, Odell Beckham. That rounded out the first round. And we had Leonard Fournette, Melvin Gordon, Dalvin Cook, Julio Jones, Michael Thomas, and Keenan Allen. So, all right, now at running back, 
we have our choice of maybe Devontae Freeman, which Ooh. Jack's not a fan of at all. I threw open my mouth a little bit. Yeah. It was pretty gross over here in the studio. Uh, Jordan Howard, Jarek McKinnon, Christian McCaffrey. Uh, and That's then maybe relevant. at wide receiver, we can go A.J. Green, Devonta Adams, Mike Evan, Doug Baldwin, T.Y. Gronk's still on the board if we wanted to go Gronk and any quarterback. So what are you thinking here, Jack? Well, there's no there's no chance I draft A.J. Green. <laughs> um, I really don't believe in his quarterback play that he's got going on, Andy Dalton. And I'm not just a, I'm just not a firm believer in the Bengals in general, in my opinion. So yeah, AJ Green has the highest ADP on the on the board here, but I would go uh, Mike Evans in my opinion. Yeah, it could be a bounce back year for Evans. Uh, I Except, hope. Except yeah, he has bad quarterback play too. So I yeah, but I I'd rather take with Evans that logic you go with Adams because obviously he's the best quarterback in the NFL throwing him the ball. Yeah, I we go Gronk here. Any any thoughts on Gronk here at this spot? Too early or no? Um, Should we hope he falls to us in the third? I don't think he will, but we could hope. Yeah, I'm gonna roll. I, I I'd want a strong wide receiver. I'll I'll roll the dice with, and hopefully he's in the third round. But I doubt it. So yeah, either Devonta Adams or Mike Evans. So really, your call. Which one do you want to go for? I bet you pick a- Evans because. Yeah, I, I've been getting Evans a lot. I, I want to see what my team looks like with Devonta Adams. Up with Devonta, why not? Mm, nah, not Devonta. I also get him a lot. So we'll we'll go Adams just because. I said Devontae. Uh, oh, Devonta, I, I thought, oh Devonta. man, I got them confused. Yeah. No chance I draft Devonta. <laughs> All right, we, we got Devontae Adams at the second round. All right. All right, so we has the third round. Oh, Gronk just got picked. Oh, where? Last oh, one. yeah, the next picks went McCoy, which I don't know how McCoy's going to fall in drafts with this suspension possibly looming. But yeah, we'll have to see how that turns out. But yeah, yeah, that's kind of a... As of right now, his ADP kind of took a hit. Yeah. Then we had AJ Green, Christian McCaffrey, Evans, Freeman, and Gronk right before us. Uh, yeah. So we're looking at running backs. We're looking at Howard, McKinnon, Mixon, uh, wide receivers. We got Baldwin, Ty, Thielen, Hill, and then uh, any quarterback and any tight end. I think, I think I know who I want. Who do you want? In my opinion, in the third round here, with these two guys on sitting here on the board, I would definitely go running back in this round because I feel like. You can get there's there's a lot more uh wide receiver sleepers available not sleepers just guys that are have a lower ADPs and am I I I love Jordan Howard I would go for him right here I just, I think he's kind of being slept on he had some really good uh first two seasons first two seasons whatever past two yeah. years yeah so and his his offense is rising and I think that he can also rise with it so that I would go. Jordan Howard here. I completely agree. Okay, good. I think running back security is obviously the most important on draft day, and I feel very safe with Johnson and Howard as my RB one and RB two. So safe, I'm gonna yeah. go with that. And we, uh, oh, Devontae Adams. All right, yeah. So he's yeah Johnson and Howard. That's a very safe, as you said. And then Devontae Adams, just because he's never been a wide receiver one, I think he's kind of a wild card, but still, whatever. Yeah, I think he could be good. So. Uh, some names that went off the board after we picked Howard were Jarek McKinnon, Travis Kelsey, Joe Mixon, Aaron Rodgers, first quarterback off the board at 3-8, uh, Tyreek Hill, Doug Baldwin, Kenyon Drake, Thielen, Diggs, Henry, T.Y., and Zach Ertz. So, what do we got here? Uh, at running back, we have our choice of a lot of rookies. We have Geis, Penny, Freeman, Jones, we also have Alex Collins, Jay Ajayi, Lamar Miller, Mark Ingram on the board. And at wide receiver, we have Amari Cooper, Larry Fitzgerald, uh, Jeffrey Robinson, Juju, Demarius Thomas. Any of these names stand out to you? On uh, running back and wide receiver, or just in general? In a- general, but I guess running back and wide receiver. Because we kind of pass on the top guys at the position, so at the quarterback and tight end, so we might as well just wait on them. Yeah, I definitely at this point wait on quarterback, but... Um, I would probably go wide receiver here just because we ha- we're with the Johnson and Howard as our running backs. I feel very secure at that as my running back just leading the pack. So I'd go wide receiver just to just because I'm uh, a tad skeptical of Devonta Adams. But uh, so I the- really like Fitzgerald, but I don't know if I want to put two of our first four round picks in Cardinals offense. That's right. Yeah. So I really I don't know. We, the, we might want to. I maybe so we go ahead and get them, but I don't know. 
Yeah, I, I'm thinking the same reason. I like Al, Allen Robinson too, but I wouldn't. I don't know if I want to put stock in a. I don't know. I just I just talked up their offense, but he, yeah, Mick, it's still Mike, Mitch Trubisky. It's still yeah, he's still a second year quarterback, and I don't know if I trust Allen Robinson and Jordan Howard behind him, like both on my team, just relying on them. So, in my opinion, I'd go Demarius. I love Demarius this year. Um, I think it's a toss-up between Demarius and Juju. I don't know which one I like better this year, but I'm going to go Demarius. I feel like he's safest, but what do you think? I would go. I would actually get Geis here. Geis? Why yeah. is that? Uh, I mean, I, I got Geis in the last mock draft I did in the show, and I'm just a big fan. I think he's going to see a ton of carries. Maybe not too many targets with uh, Chris Thompson back there, but I don't. Know, I don't know. I think we. I think all these guys, like we just mentioned, a wide receiver, are kind of in the same tier. So I think we might as well just wait and see which one's there in the next round. That's true. Yeah, and um, yeah. So yeah, Tamaris and Juju are the fourth and fifth wide yeah. receivers left up there. But the only question mark I have about guys, it's not question mark, just concern, is that the Redskins are gonna be terrible, and they're gonna. I I think they're gonna be the worst in their division. And I just think that they're gonna be behind, gonna be behind in games, and they're not gonna be running the ball, and he might not see the the opportunity as we think. But in regards to their depth chart, he's definitely gonna be their clear go to guy as their bell cow back. Chris Thompson's gonna be involved in the passing game, so I believe they got their best offensive lineman back from injury, though. So their offensive okay. line is improving. Yeah, uh, go. Not not great, but it's probably top, maybe top fifteen. I so. get a jolly, but go get guys. All right, can't we're gonna get go get guys. Can't, can't get wrong with that. Juice. Darius Juice in our flex our spots. Flex. All right. Uh, there some, we go. The next game, next names that went off the board: Larry Fitzgerald, Josh Gordon, Amari Cooper, Brandon Cooks, Allen Robinson, and Rashad Penny. Josh Gordon is still there. Why is he so low on this list? I don't know. It's weird. All right, perfect. So we still have our choice of Demarius, and I'm not getting out, Sean, for the life of me. But Demarius and Juju. If you can't tell, Jack's pretty either hot or cold on players. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I think we got to get our man. Juju? Of course. We got to get him, man. He's a good Juju. <laughs> oh, he's just a cute little puppy. I love that guy. He's uh, like 17. You know, I. we're not just saying this because we're Steelers fans, but the Steelers have a very prolific, explosive offense. Explosive. Uh, you know, Juju obviously had a great year as a rookie last year. Didn't even get that many looks on the field in the beginning of the season still finished with 900 over 900 yards and seven touchdowns as a but for a rookie that's great yeah exactly yeah. He, he didn't wasn't even seeing starter reps in the beginning of the season so if he crazy yeah. now he's got a full year entrenched in that wide receiver wide receiver two spot in the Steelers offense so I think Juju is a good bargain here in round five so we're going to go ahead and get him so our team so All far right is David Johnson, Jordan Howard, Devontae Adams, Juju Smith-Schuster, and Darius Geis. Uh, let's see here. Uh, some quarterbacks, we don't want to pay, we don't want to forget completely some quarterbacks and tight ends. But Cam Newton, Drew Brees, Carson Wentz still on the board uh, there. I think we may, if we want to get one of those guys, maybe see if they're still there in round seven. Uh, tight end, where is tight end? Oh no, we lost our tight ends. The Here they Here are. We go. Uh, yeah. Gronk, Kelsey, Ertz, Olsen, and Graham are off the board. I don't really want to get a tight end here. So we'll look back yeah. at running back and wide receiver. Yeah, so running backs, we got Lamar Miller, Mark Ingram, Royce Freeman, Deion Lewis, Sony Michelle, uh, Lynch, Coleman. But wide receivers, we got Marvin Jones, Crabtree, Sammy Watkins, Chris Hogan, Corey Davis, Pierre Garçon, Devin Funches, Emmanuel Sanders. All of those names I don't like <laughs> wide receiver, if I'm gonna really? be honest. I I find myself getting Marvin Jones a lot in round six. I've been starting to get him in a few, but really, uh, I don't know. In my in my opinion, I would go Cam Newton here because I think that he's he's getting the pieces around him again this year that not again, but he's just getting pieces back. Like he's he, they got DJ Moore um, in the fir- first round, right? Yeah, yeah, they got DJ Moore in the first round. First wide receiver off the board in the NFL draft. Getting his go-to guy, Greg Olson, back, that's going to be huge for him. Another year with McCaffrey. CJ Anderson's also going to help him as well. And his his wide receivers that were forced into wide receiver one rules will fall back into wide receiver two rules. And, well, actually, Ted Ginn's gone. 
Is this, yeah, so he was gone last year. Yeah, I just remember that as well. But so Funches is he's going to be slipping back a little. Uh, I just think that he's got the pieces around him that he'll shine. He's still got his legs, which is great for fantasy, obviously. But that's just me. I'm a little biased towards Cam Newton. He's m- my first love. So yeah, you know, I I I am all in on Cam this year. I. I, he was a guy I was staying away from last year because I think he had he was coming off shoulder shoulder surgery at the end of last season and the off season, so I stayed away from him last year. But I'm all in on him this year, for all the reasons you just said. He's uh, gained a lot of weapons, and had some return. I usually wait on him for a little bit, but I think we should just try it out until our team looks. Why not? Uh, we're gonna go Cam here as our quarterback. All right. So the next core uh, next. Names that went off the board, excuse me. We did we board. did start a quarterback run. Yeah. Look at us. Carson Wentz, Drew Brees, and Kirk Cousins all went in that turn there. Um also Mark Ingram, Marvin Jones, and Evan Ingram went as well. Uh I think we could pro- probably get uh I think we should look at running backs because I really I, I was kind of liking Mar I was liking Marvin Jones and Jarvis Landry before. But now these names really don't excite me with Crabtree and Sammy Watkins and Corey Davis. And, uh, I don't Jarvis know. Landry wasn't on the board last. And oh, he wasn't. No. Oh, yeah. okay. I like Landry and that and that. ADB, yeah. So yeah. I, those wide receivers really don't excite me. I'd rather just wait. And I think we should just get another running back, honestly, because nothing else really. Yeah. Excite means elsewhere, and you can always get running back depth. It never hurts your team. Yeah, and I really like this this chunk of running backs looking at here. So. Uh, leading off, we got choice of Lamar Miller, Royce Freeman, Deion Lewis, Sony Michelle, Marshawn Lynch, Tevin Coleman, and yeah, I I think Miller, uh, Lamar Miller, he's he's kind of uh, he kind of didn't uh, have the production people wanted at the end towards the end of last year, but Watson was gone, and with Watson, he was great, and I think that with Watson back this year, he also he has another chance just to to be what he was. So I think that he's not a bad option. I obviously love Royce Freeman this year. Um, yeah, with this in the Broncos offense. Deion Lewis I also like. So, I mean, what do you, who do you look at? Who do you want this, this pick? Uh, I, I'm going to go. I like Lamar Miller. Okay. Uh, we already have Geis. I don't really want to. I, I all often fall into the trap of falling in love with too many rookie running backs because I th- we've seen so yeah. many bursts onto the scenes the past three years. Especially with, in this rookie running back class, yeah. Yeah, with Zeke and Howard and Fournette and McCaffrey and uh, Hunt. and Kareem Hunt. Kamara. So, and yeah, Alvin Kamara, I don't want to leave any names out. But there's so many that burst on the scene and it's easy to fall in love with those guys. So you don't really want to fall into that trap of getting too many and you, maybe this could be a down year for the rookies. Yeah. But I think we could go with someone like Lamar Miller. It doesn't, he has virtually no competition besides uh, Dante Foreman, who is off Devonta Freeman, who's who's coming off of a very uh, gruesome Achilles injury, so he could even be out for the first six weeks on the pup list. So yeah. other than him, he has zero competition at all. And uh, you know, behind it, what could be a very good offense for the Texans, I think we should go with Lamar Miller here. He is our running back four, so we're not really depending too much on him. Yeah. So we got other guys uh, to depend on at that position. Uh, some other names that went off the board after we picked Lamar Miller were Corey Davis, Michael Crabtree, Jimmy G, Sony Michelle, Matthew Stafford, Delaney Walker, Royce Freeman, and, and among other names. Uh, let's see. What do we got here? This is round eight, I believe. Yes, it is yeah. round eight. Uh, we only have two wide receivers, which could be a little concerning at this point. But again, we didn't really like those names that we were looking at before. Yeah, let's see. Uh, uh, so let's look at that oh, again. Here we go. Um, uh, scroll down again. Not too many of them went. Uh, I, I don't know. Who do you like here? So what we have, uh, the names here, we got Chris Hogan, Pierre Garcon, Emmanuel Sanders, Robert Woods, Robbie Anderson, Cooper Cup, Randall Cobb, Anderson Crowder, Jonathan Parker, and Marquise Goodwin. I actually, you know what? I kind of like Chris Hogan at this spot. I didn't like him in round six or seven, but now we're in eight and the back end of it, round eight. I kind of like it now. Convince me why. Julian Elliman's gone for the first four weeks. Okay. Um, he, he was. I had him on my team last year in fantasy stars. Chris he, Hogan. Yes, he was very good. He really was. If you look, he wasn't putting up huge, huge games, but he was consistently scoring touchdowns. 
Uh, even with Gronk in the lineup, he still had red zone looks. Yeah. Uh, and for some reason, Brady just really likes him. And, ne- and this is on offense now without Brandon Cooks. They Brandon Cooks last year. Exactly. I, for, I, I always forget about Brandon Cooks. Somehow he just yeah. gets lost <laughs> in my mind. So, yeah, you take away Brandon Cooks. Yeah. So right. I, yeah. I, there's he's a lot. He's got to. Sure, yeah. He's the Patriots' number one wide receiver for at least for the first four weeks. <laughs> so I, I mean, let's take a flyer on Chris Hogan. And he's he's not a slot receiver, am I correct? No, or is he just like kind of a kind of a swing, whatever he can do, whatever. I don't know, man. He's a former lacrosse player. I know, yeah. So I I think he's a he's a big guy. So even when Edelman comes back, Edelman's more their slot guy. The 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 short passes where he takes it himself so I, Chris Hogan can still be involved in the offense when he uh, when Edelman returns so yeah good pick there was that was that the eighth round seventh round end of the eighth yes yeah that's yeah good value pick some other names went off the board uh, Hogan's teammate Julian Edelman as we just described Carlos Hyde at eight ten Robert Woods Marlon Mack and Pierre Garcon uh let's see let's see the tight ends we're in round nine we don't have a tight end just to see if there's any names that we like here at this adp uh oh mm, i kind of like it here we got a name that we're both I, 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 there's three wow i like three or four of these guys honestly a tight end at this spot in the ninth round yeah uh, we got kyle rudolph trey burton jordan reed george kittle jack doyle and i i like out of those five guys i just mentioned i really like kyle rudolph trey burton and george kittle so what do you I think also of like those three guys, and this round I definitely think we should go for Kyle Rudolph. Yeah, I think Kyle Rudolph is ex Notre Dame guy, so I I like Kyle Rudolph. But scores uh, points in Jack's book right there. Yeah, <laughs> um, and he's he's got uh, Kirk to work with this year. Kirk loves the tight end, and I really think that he can shine. It could be his career year. So yeah, on a great offense. Uh, great team in Minnesota. Everything's kind of fallen in place for them, in my opinion. I think, really think he can shine, and I don't think he'll be here in the next round, so I think we should go ahead and capitalize on it now and draft him. Ninth round, Kyle Rudolph. I like that. Give Hoping, me that baby. every day of the week. Twice on Sundays. Twice on Sundays. All right, so we got a huge, uh, not a huge way, but we got Cooper Cup, Rex Burkhead, Marshawn. Marshawn Lynch went pretty late, in my opinion. Nine seven. Yeah, I don't yeah. know about that. Calvin Ridley, Jameson Crowder, CJ Anderson, Tariq Cohen, Chris Thompson, Carry on, Cobb, Jamal Williams, and DJ Moore also went. I think we should We gotta go. Them. I think we we have three wide receivers. Yeah, no, I was I gonna say wide receiver. Probably... Yeah, we only have three wide receivers at this point. We gotta get get some sleepers down here. Where is this list? Okay. So wide receivers we can go for. Wow, <laughs> these guys are still there. Uh Manuel Sanders, Robbie Anderson, Devontae Parker. Marquise Goodwin, Kenny Stills, Rashard Matthews, and, and then we're not even gonna we're not even gonna mention Kelvin Benjamin, but I just did. So I'm sorry for everyone listening. So, uh, who do you think out of those whatever five six guys I just named? Uh, I I think Sanders in the tenth is a pretty good value. I mean, I'm not in love with Sanders, but it just seems kind of like low for him to go in the double digit rounds. You know, I feel like he should be like maybe a round eight or nine guy. So I. I I, again, I'm not in love with him, but he sees a new quarterback throwing him the ball, and he could see a resurgence. So I, you know, I maybe I'm kind of safe option, I guess. So uh, the name that jumps out at me, obviously, is Marquise Goodwin. I'm kind of in love with him. Uh, he, my dynasty, uh, my dynasty wide receiver. I think that he's gonna he, Garoppolo and Goodwin have great chemistry. I really think that they're gonna be a good duo this year. Um, and so I mean, I'd go Goodwin. I'd also consider Robbie Anderson. I, I mean, people are kind of uh, forgetting about what's his name. Who's coming back? Quincy Nunwa. Yeah. So he's gonna. So yeah, Robbie Anderson had that huge breakout uh, stretch of weeks there last year, but he was their guy, and Quincy Nunwa was their supposed to be the wide receiver one last year. So he's coming back. He's uh, we assume he's gonna take away targets from him. So that's something to think about. Although I do like Robbie Anderson. He's kind of uh, intriguing to take. He's not getting suspended, is he? Or what's the deal with him? Uh, he's who knows? Nine, nine accounts of whatever <laughs> that one night. But so yeah, who you? Um, I uh, take Goodwin. We can go with Goodwin. Yeah, I I think we got him last time in the mock draft. I've been getting him a lot of my personal ones. So 
you know, he, I, I have so high expectations for him as, as, as you do as well, but it, we could be, you know, <laughs> I, I've got high expectations. It could be let down during the season, but yeah, who else are they throw under though? They got, um, Pierre Garçon. Pierre Garçon. Yeah. He's old, but not, he's really not that old. Is he really? I honestly he, thought, he, I feel like he's so old. I thought Garçon was like 34, 35. I think he's 30, maybe, maybe, maybe like, 30 he's like 31. So I, yes, yeah, so they have him, but. Then they, who they draft? They draft Look who went. Own. Look who went in this mock draft. I have no idea why. This has to be a mistake. <laughs> Des Bryant just got picked. I have no idea why. You know, on, on Fancy Football Calculator, he's not even there. The, he, he, he for some be. reason, okay, I Des Bryant's not there, which I guess is because he's not on a team, except Fancy Football Calculator has free agents. But for some reason, Mike Gusecki is not on Fancy Football Calculator. I swear. I have no idea why. Like, he's going to... He's going to be relevant, like, over, like, Hayden Hurst is there. Like, he, just as equal chance of being relevant as Hayden Hurst. I don't know why he's there, and I'm very mad as a dynasty owner of Mike Gusecki. But anyway, um, hold on, real quick. But what were, um, didn't they draft someone, the 49ers, wide receiver? Dante Pettis. Dante Pettis, Pettis, I couldn't think of the name. Yeah, so who knows about him. Anyway, what's our situation look like for round 10, 11? We are in round 11 right okay, now. Okay, round 11. Are we? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think we should make an executive executive decision to not get a defense or kicker. Yes, and and here's why mind, you yeah. should do that. Uh, credit credit the fancy footballers. Um, no, dude, I came up with this idea before them. Not before them, but they reinforced my thinking. Let's yeah, put it at that. Or whatever. They said it too, so we're not ripping them off. Especially the if you have a draft early in August for whatever reason. Uh, we. It, obviously, it's best to have your draft later on in August uh, to see how these guys progress in preseason and training camp and stuff like that. But if you have to have it early for whatever reason, college or just things, scheduling reasons, right? you should definitely not take a kicker in a defense. Just so you can have so many, just enough uh, wide receivers and running backs just to maybe take a flyer on a guy. And if he emerges as a starter via injury or just he does better than the guy in front of him on the depth chart, you have that guy. And then you can just drop whoever your worst player you is stream your kicker in defense all year, which it, really that's what, yeah, it, that's it, what most of you are going to be doing. And it's just their defense kickers are un, pretty unpredictable. It's the guys like, unless they you really got, are, unless you got the Rams last year and like no one predicted the, or not the Rams. Sorry. No, 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 no. the Rams were good. Yeah. The Jags and the saints, unless you, like the saints last year, or just no one thought, had, thought they would be fancy relevant at all. So like, there's just so many unpredictabilities. Is that a word? I don't know. Um, with defenses and kickers that and kickers, oh yeah, kickers, or right, whatever you, you you get it, yeah. So just Greg Zerline in twenty sixteen finishes the kicker twenty six and he finishes the kicker one in twenty seventeen. It's unpredictable, and I it's not worth like it's definitely a better value pick of getting one of these uh, wide receivers or running backs in these later rounds. Uh, so, I hold on, so think uh, yeah, we're gonna go with. Ooh, Ty Montgomery. <laughs> uh, Corey Clement, you like him? I'd rather get the handcuff. Not the handcuff. We don't have. Uh, what's I don't name? think we should handcuff. No, no, not not the handcuff. Dante Foreman. I meant um, Devontae Booker, which I really think that Royce Freeman's going to be their guy. But... I I will not touch Devontae Booker. Okay, yeah, you might be right. I the only reason I touched Devontae Booker is if I had I'm thinking that we have Royce Freeman. If I have Royce Freeman, I'm very I'm more inclined to get Devontae Booker just to have the handcuff. Even then, don't want him. Why though? Like he he he's sucks. I really don't think he's good. Yeah. I, so why me, why do you want to draft him then? Just because I think that whoever comes out of that backfield can have a chance. Like C.J. Anderson. It was good. Luck. I mean, senior I think is better talent than Mont- and what's his name, Devontae Booker. But I just think whoever comes that backfield has a chance to be productive, and I think that it'd be safe to have that handcuff. But you want to go on a guy with both kind of like Sterling Shepard. Yeah, hold on. What's our how many four and right? four? All right, go yeah. go Shepard because our um. It's always safer to go to add running back depth when you're tied with four and four and invest four wide receivers. However, our running backs are clearly better than our wide receivers and more safe because we got David on Jordan Howard and Geis, and then we got Lamar Miller. That's our top four running backs. So I'm I'm pretty uh, content with that. Just our wide receivers are a little more uh, risky. So definitely Shepard is a 
good pick there, in my opinion. All right, we'll go running back now in round 12. Still the similar guys there from last time, honestly. So. Yeah, so just any name, honestly. Doesn't have to be at the top of the thing. Oh, these are, these are, this is disgusting. I guess... I like I like Clement. I think he like you got to go pass catching backs here. You don't want to have guys that are buried your second or third running backs. Well, if we charts. want pass, I know you don't want more than one rookie, and I'm biased towards Naheem Hines, but he's he's a, gonna be there though. You're right. Yeah. Well, you, yeah. Well, I was just looking down the list when you said any name, but so maybe we can get him. In, oh, I thought what round are we in? Fourteen? Twelve? Oh, well, okay. <laughs> so yeah, go. Um, uh, I wouldn't go Clement. I'd go Montgomery over Clement just because. He's probably going to have more production, honestly. But the Packers, ugh, I red flags go up in the, the Packers' backfield. I don't really typically draft them, but whatever. All it's right. a, worth the 12th-round risk. Yeah, exactly. So uh, we have three rounds left. Hold on, is this gonna is this going to force us to get a defense kicker here? or I have no idea. We'll find out. We'll find out. Uh, we'll go wide receiver here. Who do you like out of these guys? All the way in the right Tons column there. Skills. Um, kind of like Tyrell Williams, maybe. I like Tyrell Williams. He's in my dynasty team, and oh yeah. god, maybe I don't like him now. <laughs> you want you you want to trade for him? I'll pick him here. I don't want to draft. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to trade for him. Uh, I'll give you John Ross for him. N- no. Zero experts agree of picking Tyrell Williams. By the way, let's but prove the experts wrong. That's baby. what this is about. <laughs> All right, so we got two rounds left. Hines is gone. Uh, I really don't know if this is going to make us take a kicker in defense, but we're going to find out. Uh, what do you think? Oh, I'm sorry. Naheem Hines didn't make it to us. Yeah, we should have just got... Tyrell Williams would have been... Yeah. yeah. Whatever, who cares? Um, okay. I guess we'll go running back. And... Oh, hold on. Let's see. Let me see this. Um, I think we can get Jordan Wilkins. I don't know. I don't believe in Marlon Mack at all. I don't either. So I think like maybe they could be a little Devonta Freeman, Tevin Coleman action. Those two young bucks. Um, we're not getting Samaj P. Ryan. I I was all in on Samaj P. Ryan here, and he burned me. Yeah, he, he burned me. He, yeah, not good. So I'm not getting these old guys. Like not they're probably not even old, but just the guys that are Bilal Powell, Gio Bernard, Theo Riddick, Doug Martin. Chris Ivory, like those guys are always just in the same spot every year. They they don't they disappoint. They never break out. Yeah, so I'd rather just get a guy with Wilkins with more upside. In my opinion, call me crazy. I'm I would get Frank the Tank Gore here. Absolutely not. We're getting Jordan Wilkins. What? Why? I Frank fine, Gore fine, but I get to make the next round pick. Okay, fine. fine. Frank Gore, he is so solid. I don't care that he's forty seven years old. He is so solid. He's going to get you like Whatever. like seven points a week. And that's what you want out of a guy like this. He's so more reliable. And he got he went to a backfield. Opportunity is not. It's 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 endless there. Honestly, like what's his name? They, her, Kenyon Drake and Kalen Bellage, Bellage is a rookie. Kenyon Drake, who it's a question mark, really. He just kind of fell into the RB1 spot there. I think he, he has a chance to still be productive. He's made of bricks, honestly. All right. We're going to go wide receiver here because I'm not too confident in our bench wide receivers. So maybe one guy that a sleeper I always feel confident in for the rest. Uh, wow. No one wants Kenny Stills in this mock draft. He is still there. Still. I don't want him either. He's going to go undrafted if I don't get him here. Yeah. Wait, are we. Is this the last round? This is the last pick we made. Okay. Um, I'm going to go Paul Richardson. I was going to say Paul Richardson. He's kind of. He, I think he's kind of. Uh, I mean, again. I'm not a big fan of the Redskins receiver receiving core, but he's he's fresh blood there as is uh, his quarterback Alex Smith, and I feel like they can they can develop something. Um, Paul Richardson kind of sh- shines shown shines whatever some weeks in Seattle under uh, Russell Wilson, and I think that he could carry some of his talent over to the Redskins. So yeah, honestly, who knows? And that's a wide receiver. Who's a is there a wide receiver one set there? At this point, Crowder, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, so it's kind of targets are kind of upper grabs, and I think that he could shine. He's a, I think he's a good 15th round pick. All right, so I'm going to run down the team we have selected here. Our quarterback is Cam Newton, running back David Johnson, running back Jordan Howard, Devontae Adams, and Juju Smith Schuster as our two starting wide receivers, Kyle Rudolph at tight end, 
Darius Geis in the flex, and then our bench is Lamar Miller, Chris Hogan, Marquise Goodwin, Sterling Shepard, Ty Montgomery, Tyrell Williams, Frank Gore, and Paul Richardson. I kind of like this team. I, I really like know. our starters. I believe in them fully. And honestly, our bench isn't... I, I like you know, I, I'm not in love with it, but definitely some guys that I think could have some good years. We do not deserve... They, they have 70 out of 100. We do not deserve that. They're just salty because we didn't take a kicker in the defense. Oh, um, that's probably Don't true. follow the yeah, trends, boys and true. girls. Don't follow the trends. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, that's going to be our show today. A lot of fun. Thanks for coming on. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> Uh, yeah, thank you for listening. And uh, oh, yeah, one last announcement. Uh, we are pleased to in- uh, I- not introduce, he's I not guess, here. kind of, he's not here. <laughs> uh, the newest member of the Hogline podcast team, uh, our editor in chief, Joey Bolton. <laughs> so thanks to Joey. He's going to be called chief. E- editor editor in chief. I don't know if that's a title, <laughs> but we're going to give it to him now. Uh, he's going to be uh, putting together our episodes, uh, adding it, making it clean yeah. and sound nice and all that jazz. Uh, so excited to be working with Joey. Thank you, Joseph. And uh, yeah, be sure to follow the, at the Hogline Podcast on Instagram and at Mitchell Manis on Instagram, and, and at underscore Jack dot Manis underscore. Yes, you can follow Jack as well. Uh, thank you for listening, and uh, I'll see you next time. Peace. See ya. <laughs>